Island is a short story first published by Stoker in 1881 in a collection called Under the Sunset. It tells of a young girl who bears witness to a giant plague and she tries to warn the townsfolk of it. Orphaned, the girl finds solace in the company of birds. There are obvious parallels to this story and Charlotte's bearing witness to Sligo's cholera, which she herself referred to as the Great Plague in her 1873 account. But another aspect is the lead character's association with birds, and this mirrors one chilling aspect of Charlotte's account. She told of the fumigation measures taken by the Sligo Board of Health to combat cholera. It was supposed that the disease was miasmic, that is, it's from the air. So the Sligo Board of Health burned noxious substances in barrels that were placed on street corners throughout the town. Charlotte says these gleamed eerily red when it was dark. These caused a smog to hang over the town, which killed all the birds in the town, and Charlotte wrote that their bodies were found on the shores of Loch Gill. The Snake's Pass, um, in 1890, is Stoker's only novel to be set in Ireland. And there's similarities in some parts to Sligo's cholera epidemic, and this is what I spotted. Charlotte told of a man going to collect the corpse of his wife from a mass grave to give her a proper burial, only to find the wife still alive in the grave amongst the other corpses. And she survived. He, he rescued her and he actually, she actually survived. But the man identified his wife by a red scarf he had tied around her waist to ease her pain on the way to the hospital. The scene must have haunted Stoker's, Brown Stoker's imagination as it recurs, but with a gender, a gender reversal in his novel The Snake's Pass. The hero, Art, is about to be buried alive in the landslide, in the landslide of a shifting bog, and he's able to cry for help when he sees the red petticoat of his lover, Nora. She tears the petticoat off, throws it to him, and pulls him to safety. Then, of course, there is Dracula, 1897, which is one of those books that has long been believed to be metaphoric for disease, colonialism, uh, migration, and so on. And the chief parallels that link Sligo's cholera and Dracula are, I've divided them into, into sections. So, one is a beast from the east, ships, mist, heroic doctors, foul smells, live burials, Catholicism, unusual summer storms, and the date of August the 11th. And these are the key aspects that link, um, in, according to my research anyway, Sligo's cholera with Dracula. So, a beast from the east, ships and mist. Charlotte says they heard that the so-called Great Plague was reported in Germany, then France, then Britain, and then, she said, with wild affright, it was in Ireland. Like Count Dracula, cholera was contagion from the east that was taught to travel by ship. Charlotte even believed it to come inland as a mist which could split in two, with one travelling north and one travelling south, seemingly of its own volition. There are recognisable traits of Count Dracula in the book. Sorry, these are recognisable traits of Count Dracula in the book. Sorry to mess that up. I'll just continue on. Similarly, Count Dracula can change into the mist to travel undetected. He is a, quote, thin streak of white mist that crept with almost imperceptible slowness, unquote. The next thing that links Sligo's cholera with Dracula is the heroic doctors, because in Dracula, two of the characters who begin a fight back against the vampire are medical doctors, Seward and Van Helsing. Sligo's cholera epidemic was notable for the loss of heroic doctors who became viewed as types of tragic heroes in their attempts to fight the disease. Next we have foul smells. Dracula and Sligo's cholera are linked by smell. In Dracula, the character of Mr. Swales senses something evil and says, there's something in that wind that sounds and looks and tastes and smells like death. Long after the epidemic petered out in September 1832, there remained a terrible stench in Sligo that was widely remarked upon. 
It was described by William Woodmartin as a singularly disagreeable odour, perceptible when passing the courthouse. And it was attributed to the very many corpses that had been buried in the abbey grounds, where there was scarcely enough clay to cover the coffins. Thus Charlotte, living quite close to the courthouse and within a stone's throw of Sligo Abbey, would have been exposed to the sickly smell for months after the epidemic had abated. Count Dracula too is associated with rancid smells. This smell causes Jonathan Harker to be overcome by a, quote, horrible feeling of nausea, unquote. He is greeted by a deathly sickly odour when he approaches Dracula's tomb, and places associated with Count Dracula in the novel have a decaying smell, especially his house in London, Carfax Abbey, which has a, quote, earthly smell, as if of some dry miasma which came through the fowler herb, unquote. Another feature of Sligo's cholera epidemic that likely influenced Dracula are the mass graves and live burials that occurred. Live burial was a feature of the cholera epidemic in general throughout Ireland, throughout Britain and throughout Europe and was not just known in Sligo. Charlotte tells us of mass graves into which cholera victims were placed alive. She wrote of cases where people were rescued from the graves only to recover and lead long, healthy lives. Bram Stoker himself disclosed the idea of live burial was the chief inspiration for Dracula in a very rare 1897 interview. And the working title of Dracula was The Undead until shortly prior to publication. The next thing that links the two are Catholicism. In Dracula, things associated with Catholic worship are used to subdue vampires, and the chief vampire hunter, Van Helsing, himself appears to be Roman Catholic. During Sligo's cholera, the Catholic clergy were thought to be somehow immune to the disease, having suffered no deaths despite their close proximity to cholera patients. In order to free up beds, some staff at Sligo Fever Hospital took cholera patients who were near death and dragged them down the stairs of the hospital with their heads dashing on the stone steps before they were dead, according to Charlotte, those who were stupefied from opium and nearest death and were basically put into the mass grave alive. In such circumstances, a Roman Catholic priest, a Father Gilleran, emerged as an unlikely hero in Charlotte's account. He was so outraged by the ill treatment of patients that he sat at the top of the main stairs of the fever hospital, armed with a horsewhip, ready to punish staff who abused cholera victims. Charlotte had a lifelong apathy towards Catholics, but this was suspended during the 1832 episode as she admired the bravery of Sligo's Catholic clergy who cared for the cholera sick. She and Ram Stoker were Anglicans, yet he cast the symbols of Roman Catholicism such as holy water, the host, the crucifix, as symbols to subdue vampirism. And the next and final thing that links Dracula and Sligo's cholera are unusual storms at the date of August the 11th. Sligo's cholera and Count Dracula are further linked by the fact their arrival was preceded by unusual summer storms. Charlotte mentions no storm in her account Rather, Woodmartin, a later historian, wrote that the arrival of cholera to Sligo was heralded by an unusual storm, describing it as thunder and lightning accompanied by a hot, close atmosphere. A storm also comes before the arrival of Count Dracula, occurring the day before the Count makes landfall in England. One of the, quote, one of the greatest and suddenest storms on record has just been experienced here. The weather had been somewhat sultry, but not to any degree uncommon in the month of August." Unquote. Charlotte Thorny Stoker wrote that she could not quite recall the date, but Woodmartin tells us precisely that it was August the 11th that the disease claimed its first victim. Bram Stoker, the avid library researcher, would have had access to Woodmartin's History of Sligo Town and County, which had been published from 1882. And the date of August the 11th is pertinent in the novel Dracula because it is when the Count, having travelled by ship from the east, 
claims his first victim on English soil. He bites Lucy Westenra on infecting her with the contagion, which ultimately makes her an undead man.